Hey guys, good morning. Happy Sunday. So this is going to be an interesting video. I've thought about this topic for a while and when I was younger and when I first started my brand, like when I was formulating the concept and like figuring out how to do it, I didn't really come across a video like this talking about like technical things about screen printing and like where to put your graphics and like sizing all that stuff. So this video is kind of more advanced, but it's also kind of important if you're a beginner and you're trying to figure out like how to get graphics onto your shirts and hoodies and whatnot. So today I'm going to be talking about like placement of graphics, the sizing of them and the com complexity of them. And at the end, you'll kind of figure out like how exactly you want to go about making your designs possible on your clothing that you're trying to print, right? So the first thing, and I already got my cool little lawn sleeve I drew over here, or yeah, I drew it on here. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is placement. So typically, if you're going through a screen printer, they have kind of a wide variety of things they can do with placement, but it's also it also has constraints. Um, they can't necessarily print certain things on certain um, parts of the clothing, for instance, a lot of screen printers are not gonna print on like the the hem or the sleeves, you know, like on these parts or the collar because it doesn't really work out that way for their printers and the ink will get smudged on it and stuff. It just doesn't work out. If you are running your own operation, you have your own screen printing setup and you're experimental, you can do stuff like that and it may work for you. But for mass production and for smaller um, printers, they might not be able to do stuff like that. So. Typically, and here's the shirt, I'm gonna divide it. Typically there's a lot of nice areas that you can print on. So this is like the chest line in the center. Um, you have the sleeves, you have the, the chest right here, um, and anywhere around here. And then also the back and the the lower and upper sleeves, those are popular places to print on a shirt, on a t-shirt, a long sleeve, and a hoodie. I've printed on like all those places. The thing I really want to talk about, this is like an interesting topic that no one has really discussed, is exactly how do you place the main graphic on the front of the shirt. And in my opinion, and from studying other higher-end brands, and from doing my own brand for over three years, the best spot to put a logo or a graphic is like dead on right on the chest line. So a lot of brands, they kind of don't pay attention to that and screen printers as well. They don't really like care too much about placement. But in my opinion, I feel like the best place to put a, a graphic, like when you're putting like a dead on graphic uh, on the center chest is right at the chest line right here. Even like this graphic right here. I feel like it could be a little bit lower, but it's okay right there. Uh, I think this is like the best best spot to put. So like I would put my logo right here, right? The Dubashka logo. So like it would be like this. And it looks better than when it's higher up. Some Sometimes brands, they don't like pay attention to that. And it's like up here and it kind of looks a little bit wonky. I typically what I do to see like if placement is good when I get it from the printers, I, uh, I have like my fingers and I put like, if it's four fingers or five or six fingers below the collar right here, I feel like that's a good placement and that's just kind of in my head. Um, you do need to talk, if you're using a company, you do need to talk to them about that and be like, hey, this is exactly where I want it and they can arrange that for you. If you don't specify it to them, they'll kind of have variations and I've seen that even with my own stuff. Sometimes they would print a little bit too high and sometimes they print dead on. So like even even now, like I need to talk to them more about that, making sure it's always standardized. I feel like that's the best placement for them. So uh, center chest, not too high. And the reason why you kind of have to think about placement is that your designs are interacting with the clothing, right? The clothing is the canvas. And this is like a design principle. I learned this from school and from experience. 
And a lot of artists and designers, they of course realize this and utilize this when they're when they're doing their artwork. So for example, you have, um, let's say this is like a, a business card that you give out to people and you have your little like logo right here. You don't want, so that like you have like spacing between here and spacing between here. So the logo, and this is like a bad example right here. It, it wouldn't be good for you to put the logo right jammed up against the corner right here because this um, white negative space right here is interacting with the graphic right here, right? So you have to consider that when you're printing on clothes as well, exactly how the graphic is interacting with the actual piece because it's the canvas, right? Um, and, you know, that's just an interesting thing that I've thought about when I design clothes, you know, how is the graphic interacting with the actual canvas of it, right? And another interesting thing, um, so like, yeah, you have to think about, think about negative space. And you can look more into that. That is just a design principle, negative space. And also when you're working with your screen printer, they, like I said, you have, there are certain requirements that they have like exactly what they can do. So you need to uh, talk with them. What are the constraints? Talk with screen printers. And if you have your own operation, you can experiment and see what, what are your constraints because you can't necessarily do everything when you have super customized pieces and you're going crazy. Usually uh, you're having them done at a manufacturer somewhere, you know, and that's a whole different process. This is just like basic screen printing things. So the next thing that I want to talk about is the sizing. Um, so when you're printing, you have like, sometimes you have extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, 2XL, 3XL, 4XL. So you have um, extra small to, usually brands go only up to 3XL, some go to 4 or 5XL, but that's pretty rare because it's difficult to manufacture those items and then they obviously cost more. So with that, you have, a, what happens is that the graphic either looks too small or too big on the clothing too small or too big of graphic um and i've actually tested this so I, once in a while i go to the mall and i you know go into like the zoomy store i go into h&m like those kinds of stores just to look around and see kind of what bigger companies are making because i'm always curious like get a get an image of that. And I have walked around and I've, and I've paid attention to like, uh, like for instance, let's say you have long sleeves shirts and like they have extra small and then they had up to like three XL or whatever. And I noticed that the graphic was actually different sizes on each piece. So for instance, the, the three XL shirt, the graphic would be larger printed on there than it would be on the, on the extra small one, right? And the reason why this is important is because it kind of relates back to this principle about how does the graphic look on the shirt is like with the negative space around it. And a thing that you have to realize is that if you want the graphic to have different sizing on like smaller or larger clothing items, you need to create more screens for that. So if you're going in this range, you might ha actually have to do two to three screens just for one graphic. Like, let's make it super simple. Let's say you're only printing a one color, uh, what, like simple graphic on the front of a shirt, right? If you're going this route and you want the graphic to be sized appropriately for each size of clothing, you might have to uh, make more screens for that. So for example, like, um, extra small to medium, that would be one screen. And let's say that it would be, the graphic would be 12 inches. And then you'd have large or large to uh, 2XL 
and then let's say that so that graphic would have to be bigger it'd be like 13 inches and that would be a new screen right and then you'd have 3xl or to 4xl and then um, you might have to do another screen and that would have to be the graphic would have to be 14 inches because what's happening is that you have to make the graphic bigger to like I said to fit on the to the clothing to make it look right um, This is like I know it sounds complicated and I'll explain This is like you're doing this when you're printing volume and you're and that's important like and you're paying attention to the graphic placement I don't even do this. What I do is I only print from small to to XL and the reason why is because I don't really print smaller than that because most of my audience they fit into a small or larger than that and if you're printing extra smaller it's kind of more like towards kids I know there is some people that are just smaller like uh, for example more females are smaller um, so that's what you might do but also I don't print beyond 2XL because the cost for the item just goes up and up and up and there's a very limited quantity of blanks that they make that are bigger than uh, 2XL, so that's the problem. With that said though, I've kind of found a happy medium for my graphics. I only use, I only use one screen and I do one size. So when the screen printers have my artwork, they are only printing, they're printing the exact same size graphic on all of these size shirts. Sometimes it might look a little bit too small or too big, you know, um, depending on the size. But in my opinion, when you're starting out and when you're not, you're not printing high volume, it's not as critical. Um, it is more critical if you are, like I said, going down to extra small or to uh, 3XL or above. So then you, you do have to kind of think about that. But if you're starting out, that's that's something to note, like, um, do you want to use more than one screen, right? Um, if, if that's like super critical to you, then you might have like um, small to large and then you do uh, extra large to 2XL. So like this, this is like a good range as well to have two screens for that. And then the last thing I want to talk about is complexity. So... This is like an this is like an interesting thing that I've noticed from just making tons of graphics and working with printers, is that um, the more complexity um, equals more margin of error. So what I mean by that is like every time you add a new color, a new screen, a new placement, there's more complexity being added to the product, which means there is more of a margin of error that might occur, depending on how, how good you are at screen printing and how good your company is at screen printing. And this goes for embroidery too. Like all, all these concepts also works for embroidery. So uh, what like what is the complexity? So the complexity is color, um, number of screens, and placements. Complexity also introduces longer times to make the actual product and, then, and it's also more expensive, right? So um, longer manufacturing, And then um, cost. So you want to consider all this because this this has happened. Like people, they have this really cool idea of like something they want to put on their shirt, and it's so complex, so many colors, so many placements. And then they they give it, they hand it off to the printers, and they're like, oh, this will be the cost. And it's like it's so high that it doesn't leave you any room for profit margin. And especially if you're starting out, you're not printing like 500 shirts, so it's. Uh, you're not going to have enough margin in there because and obviously when you print more you make more money because the cost goes down so you really want to consider this and kind of back to like the complexity thing so i've noticed that when i add too much of this stuff there there's oftentimes the printers might mess up on things and then that means that i lose money or they have to uh 
go and get more stuff to replace it. And, you know, I don't know how how good a certain shops are. Like some shops might be like dead on, like they're, they got their systems down, they're always good at it, printing stuff. And some might be, you know, it might be a little bit more difficult for them or even for yourself. Let's say like you're printing something and you have like five graphic placements and you, you're screen printing and everything. And on the last one, like your fifth, your fifth print, like it's not aligned or something and you totally mess up and out of that sure is down the drain, right? You can't really sell it. So that's kind of what you have to think about. Um, oh, one last thing. So I, I think I forgot to talk about this with sizing. Um, sorry, like my brain is all over the place, but when you have a, when you're making a graphic, here, I'll just make it like a new thing. Uh, making a graphic on the computer, you have to talk to your printer or uh, figure out, it. so let's say like you have a screen that you bought online and you're gonna print it yourself or you made it yourself, you still have constraints. So here's the screen, right? And usually this is like a, a metal or a wood frame with the, the screen right here, right? You can only get this up to a certain size, especially if like you order these online or you're trying to print on a piece of clothing um, because you know, like the screen is about like, you know, this big, it can only print so much on the surface area. So you need to talk to your printers and figure out what are their size, like requirements, right? Like what, what is the maximum that they can print? So you know what, like how much space you have to work with. Um, and like I said, even if you're doing it yourself, you still have like a lot of times you have constraints with it. So you have to, you have to know your size constraints and you want to know this ahead of time because when you're designing on the computer oftentimes you might make your canvas really big and you're like you're designing everything and then like when you actually print it out like let's say you print it out on a printer for a test print to see like how it would look like on the clothing it's like super super big or super super small and then you might have to go back and kind of tweak elements or actually like redo the whole thing or like change the sizing of it because it doesn't, it won't print on there. So um, it's good to know your constraints. So then you're, you're designing the artwork in, in real size and real time on the computer. So when you print it out or when you get the screen, it's perfectly sized. Um, and like I said, so like you want to uh, set up set up your like AI file, the canvas, or if you're working on Photoshop, you wanna set up the canvas to the constraints and then work down from there. So let's say that your constraints are like 15 to 19 inches. I don't know exactly uh, how big the screens are. Uh, I, I do have my constraints on there, but I always, I always print within a certain margin, so it's not even an issue. But let's say that your constraints are 15 by 19, that is the size. So you would plug that into the computer and here's your canvas and it would be like 19 by 15. And now you would design your artwork to fit in there. So when you send it off to the printers, it's not going to be bigger than that and you won't have issues going back and forth like trying to resize it or they're confused as well. And also, the thing with this is that it has to fit within the constraints of the clothing itself. Um, so like, let's say like this is the constraint and you make it like to the max, but this might not fit on like an extra small, you know what I mean? So you have to be paying attention to that. Anyways, this is like a long uh, discussion about this. It's like super technical data, but that's kind of the way I think. And I've thought about this stuff just doing this over the years. And I don't really, I haven't really seen anyone talk about this kind of stuff. So I hope that you got value from it. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments below if you got anything good from it and subscribe to the channel. Thanks guys.